And on that note, with no further ado, let's go ahead and bring on Sister Glenda Jackson. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Here we go. Jesus, praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Glenda, are you there? Yes. Yes. Oh, praise God. We can hear you good. Um, so blessed to have you join us tonight. I mean, my goodness, the Lord has shared with you so many things uh, about what's coming upon the earth, uh, this country, and oh my, everywhere. I was so blessed to be to have the opportunity to talk to you the other day, uh, and uh Everything that you were saying was resonating and lining up perfectly with so many uh, absolutely anointed prophecies that, that we've been tracking over many decades of uh, of time. Uh, some of the stuff that David Wilkerson had seen in his vision back in the 70s and the two books that he had written. And uh, and it's just such a blessing to have you join us tonight. God bless you. Um, and we'd just love to have you, if you would, share with the listeners. I know that it, there's a whole lot of other stuff that the Lord has shown you, and I'd love for you to bring all of it out as much as you're, you know, feel led to uh, share with folks. But um, in, in especially, though, because of how important and time, uh, uh, how imminent the time is for uh, these things to come to pass. We're really just a couple of months away from the election. And right now, as you probably know, there are, well, I would estimate probably dozens of sources of information that are claiming to be coming from God on many different radio shows and TV shows that are indicating that they they are claiming that they are from, uh, hearing from God and that Donald Trump is going to be elected and and I I'd, I'd love it if you would share with the listeners what the Lord showed you um uh about what's going to happen in the, uh, in the near future with the 2016 election what the Lord showed you uh uh when uh he took you in the vision uh where you were able to see Obama uh, in the White House, uh, would you share with the listeners what our Heavenly Father has given to you uh, to share with the people regarding what's going to happen in this uh, election here in the United States for 2016? Yes. Um, the Lord showed me, you know, when I was on Sid Roth, he gave me a prophecy that uh, this was going to be one of the worst elections we've ever had, that they were going to be at one another's throat, and, you know, it came to pass. That's what's happening. They fight more than any election's ever been to the point that uh, it would not shock me at all if someone got killed in this election. But God showed me, I had a vision of Obama in the White House, and there was uh, Muslims around him, and he said, he was pounding on the desk, and he said, I cannot leave this White House. This is my destiny. And they said, well, how can you stay on as president? And he said, there's only one way, martial law. And they said, well, we know how to stir the trouble up, so we'll go out and stir the trouble up. And then you decree martial law. And I still believe it's going to happen. I believe it's going to happen, and and people are going to be caught off guard if they're not praying. Because we have the Holy Ghost, and the Bible said he would show us all things to come. But if we're not walking in the spirit of Almighty God, he's not able to show us. And so I've really been seeking God. And uh, I know I'm not wrong on this. God showed me Obama was going to win the first time and the second time when other people was prophesying other people. And, of course, we know that my prophecy was true because it came to pass. And um, people even call me the next day 
and said, we want to apologize because they didn't believe me. And I said, no, you don't have to apologize to me. You need to apologize to God because I don't know anything unless God shows it. But God showed me he won't do anything until it's prophesied. He, uh, because Noah, uh, for 120 years, he preached and he had to prophesy that the flood was coming and they did not believe him and they weren't prepared for it. And that's what Jesus said, as the days of Noah, so shall it be in these uh, last days, in these times. And the church cannot be caught off guard. We got to be awake. We got to be battle ready. And uh, I try to stay battle ready all the time because um, things are changing and they're going to change fast. They're going to come. Things are going to happen before this year's out that's going to not look good, but it is uh, God. And uh, God it, it gave his word, and all of his word has got to come to pass. And I don't believe that God is through with Obama yet because he uh, told me that he was going to, just like in Nehemiah, he decre- uh, decreed, uh, and Nehemiah told the people there, the Jews, that... Um, God had uh, brought them up out of the Red Sea, done signs and wonders, and raised Pharaoh up to show his uh, uh, power through. And he said, I got myself a name. He got, I am that I am, when he raised him up. And he told me, through Obama, I'm going to raise him up, and I'm going to get me a name. And my name is the king of glory, to show Obama who has the real power and who does not. And uh, God is ready at all times. He don't just sit back and think what to do. He's already decreed the end from the beginning. That's what he says. And he's the king of glory, and he's going to come in and show himself uh, very powerful, and uh, our economy is going to go down. More and more things are going to crumble, and uh, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars, like Jesus said, and there's going to be food shortages, and uh, God is already dealing with people to grow food. I just came back from Hawaii, and they were given 160 acres up on Mount Kona to uh, raise up food for when the bad times come. And God has always prepared his people. He's never left us without true prophets. And he said, I won't do anything until I reveal it to my prophets. Now, he's not going to reveal it to false prophets, but there's a lot of false prophecy out there. And uh, there's a few true prophets, but there's a lot more that are not, just like Elijah came and he had to face uh, 450 prophets of Baal. And so uh, we have got to be ready and prayed up and ready for battle at all times. And we don't have to be afraid. The Bible said we don't. God said, tell my people I'm preparing a place for them, and it's in my presence. In the presence of God, there is nothing kept secret. And Jesus said in Mark, the fourth chapter, there is nothing kept secret that will not come abroad. And so uh, he said, those that hear shall more be given. And this is the time we really need to hear because God's talking to the church, not to the building, but to the people. He said, he that hath an ear, in Revelation, he says it seven times. He that hath an ear, let him hear 
what the Spirit is saying unto the church. And so I believe that just before uh, uh, the election, when it's getting ready to come together, that uh, Obama's going to decree uh, martial law. And isn't it strange how the election, everybody is saying everything against one another. And uh, it would be funny if he has to decree martial law against uh, the election, the way the people are carrying on. I'm not saying he's going to do that. But they are getting very out of hand, name-calling everything. And so uh, I know that... uh, Things are coming down the way God said. There's going to be disease, more disease come out that they cannot cure. And it's uh, going to come. Pestilences. In California here, we have an outbreak of lice. And uh, they're trying to find a way to do away with it all at once. And so... uh, we're going to see more and more and more things come out. So more things are going to come out that, because Jesus is a true prophet, and he prophesied much about, he said nation would rise up against nation, the love of many will wax cold, and that uh, that's how it's getting. And he said your enemies would be those of your household. And there's uh, people turning against one another, uh, mother against daughter, uh, fathers against sons, and uh, it's going. There's more murders, but we don't have to be afraid of any of this because the Bible says we have a place. Uh, I've always told people when I minister that my Bible don't have uh if you're sick, any sick among you, call 911. And then God told me, I have a 911. And he said, it's Psalms 91 and 1. That's God's uh, 911. And we need to uh, read that every day and know and not lose our faith. Because that's how we're going to overcome the world is uh, our faith. By our faith and uh, the Lord told me when he took me to heaven on a visitation that uh, the devil's not after anything but your faith he he don't want to uh, steal anything you got but your faith and if he gets your faith he gets all, everything of you he, he your soul is open to him everything is so it's your faith that counts It's your faith that matters, so we don't want to lose our faith, and that's what he wants. That's why Paul said, above all, taking your shield of faith. If you don't take any of the armor, take above all, take the shield of faith that you may withstand the fiery darts of the devil. And you can't get offended easy. Because that's what uh, the enemy tries. And if you fall because you've been offended by ministers or people, then your faith wasn't strong. We need the faith of God. Paul went to the Corinth church, and he said we needed the God faith, not man's faith, but he demonstrated God's faith. God's faith will not let you down. God's faith, you can hold that shield high and go victorious every day and listen to what the Spirit is telling you. Listen so you'll know and be prepared every way how how to take care of your family, how to take care of people, what to pray for, what not to pray for, and be ready at all times for what's coming up. Even our enemies going to come on our borders. They're going to come against us. And uh, people are going to lose their lives. And uh, God is coming, though. We have the peace that in Christ we are safe. In Christ is where you need to be at all times. 
because in Christ is our victory. That's our faith. He is the uh, author and finisher of our faith. And at the name of Jesus, we have victory forevermore. We need to trust God for our healing because Jude said that we need to contend, and that means faith. Uh, that means like a heavyweight contender. You're going against someone that's after uh, the prize, and you've got the prize. Occupy till I come is what God said. And God's occupy means not just to take up a space, but to get back uh, what belongs to us, what the enemy's trying to take away because our faith was let down at a time. But we need that faith back. That faith means forsaking all I take him. That's what spells out faith. And let me tell you, God has never lost a battle. People say he has. They say, well, God's always won the war, but he's lost battles. No, in my life, I've never seen God lose a battle. If I quit believing, then I lose the battle. God don't. I do. But let me tell you, he's strong. He's mighty. He's everything you need. This salvation was bought with uh, blood, not with money. He bought it with the price that was on his own son's head. He gave the best he had. The best heaven had was Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And let me tell you, we're getting ready to have more power than we ever had in in our life. God's going to equip the church greater than it's ever been. We're going to do exploits, things that have never been done. And we're going to taste this divine nature. We're going to be... Uh, we're going to come out of this healthy. We're going to start working, uh, walking in that divine health and even greater than the book of Acts had, we're going to have. And uh, Jesus said, greater things will you do than I do because I go to my Father. And the enemy don't want us to believe that. But Jesus wants us to know he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he said, Tell my people, I am the intercessor, but I'm not interceding for anybody to get healed or anybody to get saved. And I started weeping, and I said, well, I thought that's what you were all about. And he showed me his scars. He said, I already paid the price. It's up to you on earth to uh, fulfill my work. You have the power to fulfill and He said, I'm equipping the church with all of the five gifts because we cannot be without the five gifts. That's for the perfecting of the saints. When we have the gifts, we have what heaven has for us. And let me tell you, nothing can go against God. No no weapon formed against us can uh, uh, prosper either. God didn't just say that. He had Isaiah prophesy it. I receive it. There's no devil in hell can stop me from preaching the gospel and believing God. There's not a devil in hell can stop you from believing God's word. If it's in there and he said you can have it, you can have it. If he's in, if it's in there for you to prophesy, prophesy because it will come to pass. Don't worry about if it's going to come to pass. You weren't called to worry. You were called to prophesy these end times. We got to prophesy the coming of the Lord. Everything's got to be prophesied. So we know when the church prophesies that the church knows about everything first. We shouldn't have to hear anything on the 6 o'clock news. We should already know it, already have heard it in church. Prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. And if your church won't allow prophecy in it, get the heaven out of there because you shouldn't be in there 
where uh, they won't allow Jesus to come in there. They won't allow Jesus to uh, do what he's called to do in there. And uh, so, anyway, look forward to uh, what's going to happen this year. This year is, is not over, and things are going to climax. Things are going to come faster and faster as the days go by. And remember, night cannot stop day from coming, and uh, the devil can't stop prophecy from coming to pass. And so uh, I believe that uh, uh, it is a time of rejoicing. When we see these things happen, we should rejoice. The Bible said rejoice because your redemption draweth nigh. Just think, we're looking forward to heaven, but we can have a little of heaven down here before we ever go. So we should be ready at all times to go uh, and uh, shout to the Lord and be ready to receive him as our Lord and our Savior. Jesus is our great happening, and nothing can stop it. And if uh, we allow things to stop us from serving God here, it'll stop us from going in the rapture. And people are, uh, preachers are preaching that the rapture is not going to happen, that it, God's not going to come that way. Well, they need to tear those things about the rapture out of their Bible because he sure is coming. As the days of Noah, they got where they started out believing that uh, he was going, uh, the flood was coming, and then by the time it started coming, they didn't believe it anymore. People was going a around saying uh, the uh, flood's not coming, just like they're going around now saying uh, the rapture is not going to take place. But Paul said that uh, at the last trump of God that uh, Jesus would descend uh, and he would descend from heaven on a cloud with a shout and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those that are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the air. Now, that sounds like a rapture to me, and I know he's coming, and I've had visions of the rapture, and I pray you have too. And if you haven't had a vision of the rapture, ask God to give you one. Ask God, because... We are children of vision. Where there's no vision, the people perish. That's why people are doing everything under the sun. They're committing sin because of a false grace that's being preached to them. Grace does not give you a license to sin. And grace will uh, keep you and keep you in tune with heaven. And it, it will keep you like uh, Enoch. We need to have that testimony, Enoch. And Enoch was the type of the rapture. And he pleased God. His testimony pleased God so much, God took him because he was pleased with him. When the church pleases Jesus and the Father, they're going to take us. And uh, But we're going to have to go through things we never thought we'd go through. But uh, it's uh, the Lord is going to come and take us home. And I don't care. I'm not going to let anybody cause me not to believe in that because I know what the Lord says and, and what it's all about. So I encourage every one of you today that if you don't believe what I'm saying, seek God and ask him. Ask him if these things are true. And because uh, we need to know the voice of God. If you don't know the voice of God, you won't be able to hear what he has to say. And it says, he that hath an ear, let him hear. So you got to get your ear in tune for uh, to hear from heaven and to hear that trumpet when it sounds. 
because it's going to sound, and then the angels are going to go to the northeast, west, and south, Jesus said, to the four corners, and it's going to uh, uh, rapture us out of here, and that's what I'm waiting for. And but I'm but the Bible told us we got to work. Uh, we got to work like uh, we're going to be here another thousand years. But we got to uh, watch as we work. We got to watch for the coming of the Lord. And uh, I don't believe we have another 50 years because things are coming to pass fast. Even the things that I've been witnessing and God's been showing me, what the Bible says, it's happening faster and faster. The days are going faster. Paul said they would, that the days would go fast or there would be no flesh saved. And you know yourself, things can happen fast. You can get up in the morning and there be a crisis at hand. There can be a uh, fall of our economy. And I believe that it is coming to where it, it, the dollar is going to fall. Right now you travel around the world. I've traveled around uh, the world in places. And our money is not worth as much as some of the other countries now. And our money used to be uh, worth more, the dollar, than anywhere in the world. But it's not that way anymore. It's gone down. And it's going to go down more and more. So it can fall. You can get up uh, pretty soon and go to your bank and your bank be closed and have no money and nothing to back up your finances. We got to prepare. I don't say we fight or we demonstrate. I say it's time to believe God, believe God. Pray about this election. Pray that Obama don't get to stay in there because God told me if we didn't pray, he's staying in there, and martial law is coming, and it can come overnight, and uh, we need... uh, People didn't believe about the Holocaust, and it happened while people were sleeping, and they got up, and we didn't even enter the war until uh, Pearl Harbor was bombed. But you see, we need to hear. The prophets need, if they're not uh, speaking about the coming of the Lord and things that's happening and telling you the truth, then they're just after your money. That's all they're after, and don't give to them because it's phony. There is a lot of, uh, even God said there are prophets that are prophesying lies, and they take your money, and uh, then you are left without your money, and the thing they speak over you, uh, that one false prophet came and was telling the people, that Nebuchadnezzar, everything was going to be great, and peace was coming, and Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, uh, 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 Jeremiah said, uh, uh, if that's what you're speaking, amen, it'd be true. If it comes, then it will happen. But if not, he said uh, uh, that God would uh, get up with him. And that uh, guy died. He, that false prophet died. So we need to, if their word don't match up with the uh, word of God, then they're false. It has to line up, line upon line, precept upon precept. I want, uh, I tell people the truth. I get up every day and pray, Lord, let the prophecies you give me be true. Let them be true. And don't let me deceive anybody, and don't let anybody deceive me. Jesus said we're living in a time when many would be deceived, many. So don't let any man or woman deceive you because these things are going to happen. And uh, uh, I know people are prophesying that Donald Trump's going to get it and that even they had dreams that he's going to get it. 
And uh, I'm not saying that uh, they're wrong, but I know what God showed me. God showed me Obama's go, oh, la, la, basiko, ya, basanda, iko, basanda. He's going to be on there, people. He's going to carry through. And his, uh, what he wants, the desire of his heart, his wickedness is going to come through. You haven't seen his wicked side yet. It's about to manifest, saith the Lord. I say unto you, my people, be prepared. I say unto you, hear what the Spirit of Almighty God is speaking to you this day. I say unto you, be prepared. Get ready, saith the Lord. Fear not, for I am with thee. Fear not, I shall take care of you, my children. But I say unto you, don't believe every spirit. Try the spirits and see if they be of me, saith God. I tell you, and I tell you very quickly, things are going to turn upside down. The White House is going to have a Muslim flag flying over it, saith the Almighty God. And I say unto you, I am that I am. I am the now God. I'm not the I was that I was. I am the now God. So believe me now. Search out my scriptures. Be ready and pray and seek my face that you may know to escape what's coming upon this land. Very much wicked things are coming, saith the Lord. Many people are going to die. Many people are going to be killed because they were not ready, because destruction is coming such as never before, saith the Lord. Get ready, get ready. My blood is sufficient for you. I look to see my children that have been sealed by the Holy Ghost. They shall escape. Did not I say in my word that a door was set before you and opened unto you? You are my Philadelphia church, saith the Lord. Get ready, I shall give you the keys of David. So get ready. I long for you to know me in a greater way, saith God, than you have ever known me in the past, saith the Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. I hope that you heard that and you receive it and uh, you do what God has uh, commanded you to do. God said he made a way for to bring them out of Egypt. He brought them out. When he brought them out, it said there wasn't a feeble one among them. We're going to walk in total health. We're going to walk in uh, God's divine nature. We're going to taste it. That's what Peter said in uh, the uh, book of Peter, that we need to taste that divine nature. Oh, we have God. We need to go after him. We have the most powerful God. We have the only God that answers prayer. Buddha can't answer prayer. Uh, The Hindus cannot get their prayers answered. Nobody can get their prayers answered but us. And we serve the living God, the God of, of life. He is life. He cannot taste death. He is our life. He's everything to us. So be ready at all times. Read your word every day and pray. Get into it and ask God to open your eyes. God, I just ask right now that you would open all of their ears that they may hear you, God, for themselves. And, Lord, you said there would be a people that would know their God and do exploits, things that have never been done. We're going to be able to do great miracles to show that we serve the now God. We serve the only God that there is. There is no other God beside you. And you are the living God, the all-powerful God, the almighty God, the God that... uh, brings us peace you answer our prayers god wants to answer your prayers daily daily to get ready so he can show you stuff the more you seek god the more he'll show you he can trust you but if he can't trust you then 
he won't be able to uh, uh, show you anything. But if he can trust you to obey it, he'll show you mighty things such as never before. God is so good. Let me tell you, nobody would have ever thought that a man from uh, nowhere that just came out of nothing and was our president and earned two terms, it was God sets up one and pulls down another. That ought to prove to you that he does. Our vote don't do anything. Our vote just goes and this uh, uh, way that they do they want to try to put up roadblocks and everything but God is the last word he's the first word and the last word he's the alpha and omega and you can't stop his word from happening you can't stop him from coming through for you if you believe Jesus said to those that believe all things are possible It's possible for God to take you right into the election and show you what's going to happen. If you don't believe my word, believe uh, God. God said that uh, he he, uh, sins. He told me when he started, when he called me forth to be a prophet, he said, uh, sometimes it's going to look like it's not going to be that way turn out that way but it always will all you got to do is believe i got to have faith and prophesy what he gives me i got to believe too for it to happen i got to believe and you've got to believe so god will show you more things god is the answer to every prayer and so uh i just encourage all of you today i encourage you young ministers to seek God. You prayer warriors out there, seek God and and uh, tell God, Lord, show me. You can trust me. And then let your character go with how he can care, uh, take care of you. He can take care of you. He said, I'll make a way where there seemeth to be no way. And he means what he says. The Bible is a living word. People try to tell you it's not right, it's not all there, and so forth, but it is. It is there. It is there for you and me, our guideline uh, to make it in. God is wanting to show you. He's looking for Daniels, and he's looking for three Hebrew children uh, to uh, uh, seek him so he can show they were living in... uh, bad times but they had peace god god elevated them promoted them and there's some young people out there god wants to promote you this day god wants you to bring you into a closer calling with him he loves you and he wants to come and uh, share things with you He's looking for prophets that he can show that are that are not after everybody's money. He's got prophets that he wants to uh, show what he can do. So I just encourage you, seek God. Seek God and let him tell you what you're going to be and what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I just ask you to watch over all these people and God fill them in and show them that you told me this stuff. I didn't come up or make it up, God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, let them be prepared, God. Let them be prepared with things that they never thought they'd have to be prepared with, God. Most of all, let them, let their preparation be according to your word. Let them reach for that high calling in you, God, that high calling that you, God, are going to take them into, Lord, to a height they've never known before, and they're going to be on top of the mountain, God. And, Lord God, that they can look down and see everything in the valley and what's happening, God. Lord, heaven is not 
a silent. Heaven is moving. Heaven's got a lot to say in these days, times, and days. You even said that you would show forth your signs and your wonders in the heavens and the earth. And, Lord, we're living in these times that even the weather's going to be turned upside down according to heaven's, uh, what heaven says it will be. And let them be prepared, God, Lord God, to resist the devil and to draw nigh to you. And then they'll be able to resist the devil and they'll flee from him, God. Lord, I pray, God, you said there's no temptation that you haven't made a way that they can uh, get out of it, God. Lord, move, God, by your spirit. Lord, God, encourage them, God. Give them gifts, God. Lord, God, gifts, God, to come forward, God, to uh, walk. Even, Lord, God, that they can do things in the street, God, in the street, Lord God, that if they come across a sinner, that you speak to them and they lead them to you, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, keep them like you kept Daniel and the three Hebrew children. Let them not be ashamed of you, God. Let them know, God, oh, Lord God, move upon it, God. Empower them, God. And show them signs and wonders. Give them visitations. You said in the last days you would pour out upon all flesh, Lord, prophecy. And, Lord, that the young men should see visions and the old men dream dreams. God, that's what you didn't say they'd have a vision. You said they would see visions. Lord God, see visions. Lord God, pour out the visions upon them. Pour out, God, give them angels. Let angels visit them and speak to them and show them things, God. We're living in the time of the visitation of angels. Let angels show them mighty things, God. Lord, let them report. Let angels report to them daily what's going on, God. Let nobody be asleep. But let uh, your young people stir them up, God. Stir them up like Paul told Timothy. Stir up the gifts that are in you. Stir up in the name of Jesus. Stir up the gifts, God. Oh, stir up the gifts, people that are in you. Stir up the gifts that are in you in the name of Jesus because uh, you are uh, called. You got a high calling. You didn't choose God. He chose you to be in these last days because he has a mighty work for you to do. You're living in the greatest of times. You're not living in bad times. You're living in the times that everything's coming to pass. You're going to see it fulfilled before your eyes. God's going to give you eyes to see in the name of Jesus, eyes to see and behold his glory. You're going to see the king of glory. You're going to see uh, things come down and and God show you stuff that uh, you never dreamed of seeing. So be ready, be ready at all times, some of you. I, uh, God just showed me some of you are going to have dreams tonight about uh, these last days. Some of you's already had dreams. You've already had dreams, and uh, you're going to have more vis- visions. You're going to have visions and visitations. So be ready at all times. And uh, your lives, some of you, have been just like... Uh, waiting for something to happen and nothing's happened but let me tell you it's going to happen from this night forward god's going to show you great and mighty things since you what you've never seen before have visitations and so be just be ready for it and and uh, god said some of you are waiting for things to happen that uh were prophesied over you 
and and it's never come to pass. Well, I tell you, let it come to pass now. Believe it, and let things start happening, coming alive in your in your uh, heart, in your soul, and uh, watch out for what's going to happen. The Things that's coming, e- even earthquakes and bad weather, floods. We're going to see uh, uh, things that we never thought would come to our state or our place, but they're going to come. And uh, disease is going to break out, new diseases that they're going to have to name them. There's diseases now that I never heard of when I was growing up. But they're in your time and my time now. So be ready to uh, get into the Word and ask God where you should go. Go to Revelation. Read it. There's a blessing in reading it. People think, they say, well, I get scared when I read it because it's nothing but about trouble. Ask God to open your eyes and show you. In the first chapter it said, there is a, a blessing for you that read it. Those that read it, uh, there's a blessing waiting for you. And the blessing is that God will open up and explain it to you. You don't need revelation teachers to tell you everything. You have the Holy Spirit. The anointing teaches you. The anointing, God will show you things. When I was uh, young in the Lord and young in my age, I got into Revelation, and I was so excited about it and seeing what God's people were going to do. And that's the first time I read in there that prophecy was the testimony of Jesus. And so I know that uh, you'll find a nugget in there every day if you go. Start reading it. I don't care if you have to read it ten times. Just keep reading it and let the Lord open up. God, open up revelation to them. Let them see, God, what's happening in the world. God, because you said there would be signs and wonders, and it will increase your faith. Even revelation will increase your faith because it's revealing Jesus to you. Revelation is not... Uh, just revealing the Antichrist, it's revealing Jesus. He's the important one in Revelation. And I'm telling you, you, you'll be able to tell me, call me and tell me, and say, here's what God showed me about this year. And uh, I'll tell you right on that uh, that's going to happen. And uh, But God is going to reveal to you even some things I haven't said today that he's revealed to me, but you get ready to receive them. Get ready to uh, uh, be there uh, and be and let God use you. God uh, wants you to talk to him, and he wants to talk to you. So you can, it, the Bible is very exciting. It's not a boring book. It's an exciting book, and it's alive. And it's real. And uh, things in it happen. The Bible taught me how to pray. The Bible is Jesus speaking to me every day. And I ask him every day, where do you want me to look today? Look into, it's like opening heaven to you. When I visited heaven in a vision, uh, I saw that the uh, wallpaper of heaven is made out of the Word of God, and it's moving. It doesn't sit still. It's moving. And so uh, I encourage you today. I hope you're getting something out of this today and not just uh, uh, boring to you because I'm telling you, it is exciting. When you see your first miracle and uh, God brings a miracle through your prayer, you'll be excited. You'll be very excited in the name of Jesus. So uh, be ready to uh, be excited. And so uh, I thank you for listening to me today. I thank you for giving me an opportunity. I would love to meet you face-to-face one day. 
and uh, I just uh, want to say thank you uh, for giving an ear today to me and God, and I pray that this stuff will be applied to your life and that you will see things come to pass. And remember, I hope some of you taped that prophecy I gave out because it is from God. And uh, God wants you uh, to know everything he's doing. So you should know even heaven. If you haven't seen heaven, ask God to show you heaven, give you a dream of heaven, because you have to be invited up to the throne room. Some people say they go to heaven every day. I don't believe that, uh, because you can't go to heaven any time you want to. You have to be invited, and you have to be caught up. And uh, we're going to see translations take place, though, just like Philip in the book of Acts, where he was caught away in the spirit and uh, ended up with that uh, guy leading that eunuch to the Lord. What if you went to bed tonight and woke up in another country? Wouldn't that be something? But if you believe, all things are possible. Many of you are going to be involved in this last day revival that uh, is going to take place. It's going to be a greater revival than we've ever known. It's going to be a greater revival than even my great aunt was in, uh, Mariah Woodworth Eder. She had a great revival and did great things, but we're going to do even greater things than any revival that's ever been. So prepare yourself. It said the bride prepares herself. So ask God, how can you prepare yourself? And uh, God bless all of you. Have a blessed evening. Amen. Oh, praise Jesus. Wow. I'm I'm on fire. My I got goosebumps all over my arms. My hair is standing up. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I am so psyched out. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. We praise your holy name. We thank you for the encouraging word. Uh, the darkness is not scary to those who love the Lord. The darkness, we are prepared. We are ready. We are out. We are we are calling out to you, Father God, for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon every single listener of this program. Make your bride ready, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Help us to seek you the way that we need to seek you. Make us willing vessels. Pour out the living water upon the clay, Father God, and remold that clay so that we are ready to receive your outpouring in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Sister Glenda, so much for joining us tonight. What a powerful, powerful message. God bless you. Oh, it was an honor, John. God bless you. Thank you honor. so much. <laughs> I know we know how busy you are. <laughs> we know how busy you are. Thank well, you. Well, you are too. So. <laughs> well, praise God. Well, again, we cannot thank you enough. God bless you all for joining us tonight. Uh, get the word out, folks. Be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. Get the emails out. Send out the links. Let people know this was a powerful word. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Sister Glenda. God bless you. We will see you when the harvest begins. <laughs> 